Clay Thompson to the Dallas Mavericks. What do you feel when you saw the jersey swap of him in a Mavericks uniform? You know, like that era in Golden State is like it's been rumored for a couple seasons now. We've talked about it a bunch, but it's actually over. Once I seen him in the jersey and once I seen it, it was official. It was like, dang, like, wow, like the Warriors era is really over. Like, it's over. Like, it's just as far as Clay, Steph, Draymond, like, that's over. Because even when they said, like, yeah, he's a little disgruntled. Yeah, he might not be coming back. Even when they said, yeah, he's they're negotiating, like, a sign and trade, like, he's definitely not coming back. Even then, I was just like, eh, like, it just didn't hit until, like, you know, you've seen it. You actually see him in the jersey. It's probably going to hit even more so when you actually see, like, the season starts and he's playing for another team. You know what I mean? But it's wild, man. It's wild. Like, that That era is really over. But, I mean, I can't really blame the Warriors. Um, and I can't. I, I guess you can't really blame Clay. Like, he's, he felt disrespected by their offer. Um, they just couldn't come to terms. But. Man, it it is a little bit weird though seeing him in a in a Mavericks uniform. I I don't think I've seen people who be like yeah it's, it's gonna it's gonna be like a Celtic Shack type of vibe. I'm not gonna lie. If if we talk about a Celtic Shack or like somebody going on that Celtics path, I'm more so lean with the other guy that left the Warriors, which was Chris Paul. He's oh been, yeah, he's been in a bunch of uniforms, so I wouldn't necessarily say that because Clay was a guy who play for the Warriors his whole career and this is his first time going to a different team. It's just more so weird. Um but yeah it's end of an era. End of an era. End of an era for sure. Um I'm looking right now on our TikTok to find the video here it is that we posted this was after they traded Jordan Poole for Chris Paul. I said then this is we this was June 2023, so almost actually just over a year ago. Said it didn't make sense. They need to kill this two hole, you know, double timeline stuff. You have one timeline, it's Steph. You have got to focus on just trying to maximize this window. They did it, they kicked the can another year, they got older, they tried to retool, they brought in Chris Paul. It did not work. They don't even make the playoffs. And now their team is, I would say, even worse off now, um, having missed out on the Paul George sweepstakes because they actually were saying like they threw a pretty large offer in front of the Clippers, and the Clippers said, nah, we're not trading you to the Warriors. They would rather let Paul George walk for free than trade him to the Golden State Warriors for it sounded like a package that was going to include, I think, Kaminga and Moody and some picks. Crazy. Um, is what had been rumored. I, well, we're taking that in a heartbeat. But Crazy. Here we are. And uh, I got the comments pulled up because I was told, top comments says, bro, just proved how he doesn't know ball. I don't know. Seems like seems like I knew what I was talking about before. Well, the Warriors knew what was going on there. This video makes me glad that not everyone has a big, big platform. Guy's also wrong, too. It's called extending a championship window. If Golden State wins the championship <laughs> over the next two years, none of this matters. You responded to it, said they aren't winning a championship. They certainly did not. <laughs> no, they did not. <laughs> like, bro. I don't know how it took so long for people to see the writing on the wall here. This team was not the team of old. Clay was not the clay of old. And that is okay. It's going to be very, very weird to see him in a Dallas Mavericks jersey. I actually like the fit a lot. As much as we've, I think, gotten on clay, and I think some of it is definitely deserved. Most or all of it is deserved. Um, at the end of the day, he still is one of the most elite catch and shoot players in the NBA right now. Forget all time, just Clay today. Still one of the best catch and shoot players. You're putting a guy with that type of lethal shooting on the court with the same time as Luka Doncic, who's going to bring so much gravity on the same time. 
on the court with Kyrie Irving, who's also going to be bringing so much gravity. Offensively, it's like chef's kiss with the spacing right now. I do have some questions defensively, partially because they lose Derrick Jones Jr. to the Clippers, um, and they don't really have a point of attack guy. And I'm going to say this now. It feels like they went out and they got Kyrie, and it was this, oh, my gosh, we're just going to outscore people, and they don't make the plan. In the following season, they retool their defense. They go out and get Grant Williams. That doesn't work. That turns into P.J. Washington, though. They bring in Derrick Jones Jr. They draft Derrick Lively. They trade for Daniel Gafford. They make defense their identity, and they make the NBA Finals. It now feels like they're tearing down the defense a little bit to try to buff up the offense, which is a very fine line to walk is all I'm going to say because I do think their defense is not why they lost the Finals. I think they definitely struggled shooting um, and just did not have enough enough playmakers on the offensive side of the ball. So much, so much came down to Luka and Kyrie, which is what we had talked about. So I understand that. But again, the defense can get very bad very fast without any point of attack guy. You're just going to be leaving guys like Lively and Gafford to fend for themselves at the rim, which we saw Rudy Gobert is one of the best rim protectors of all time struggle mightily in Utah when they put no defenders around him. No amount of rim protection can make up for no perimeter defense. So interested to see how they continue to build out this offseason, but I do ultimately like the fit with Clay um, in Dallas. I think when this team gets hot and on a run, it's going to be ridiculous, bro. The shots yeah. that are good. Like, can you imagine Kyrie comes down, crazy floater finish, Luca comes down, step back three. Somebody gets a steal, fast break, play just sprint to that corner. And you know that's cash every single time. Crowd is going to be electric. Uh, it's going to be interesting. It's also going to be crazy to see, like, Steph and Claire are going to play each other this year. <laughs> it's going to be a three-point shooting contest. That thought actually just crossed my mind for the first time. Like, I hadn't even thought of it from that perspective, but – yeah, they're going to have – they're probably going to extend to the game. They're going to guard each other. That's going to be – it's just so crazy. If you would have told me two, three years ago that Clay Thompson would not have been retiring a Golden State Warrior, I would have been like, you're, you're lying. What timeline am I in, bro? There's no mm -hmm. way. And they done broke the core up. Yeah, man, it's crazy. Uh, I, I like to fit as well offensively. Um, I think that what you said about them thinking – I mean, because obviously they seen that really they couldn't shoot the ball that well in the finals. Um, the defense wasn't the, wasn't the biggest problem. I'd say I think that's part of the reason why they went out and got a guy like Clay Thompson. So I think that offensively, like I said, especially when it's going well, yeah, it's gonna look amazing. Um, but I do worry a little bit on the defensive side of the ball. Um, losing a guy like Derek Jones Jr. I I think that it is gonna be a little worrisome. Um, on defense, but hey, I mean, I, I'm interested at least to see how it works. Because I do think, like you said, when it does, when it is going well, it's going to be very, very fun at the very least. Um, so I'm, I'm interested. I like I said, I like to fit offensively. I'm curious to see how it works. Um, apparently, it was him. It was the Mavs or the Lakers. Um, I, I would have been fine with Clay coming. Um, Clay would have fit super well with with Los Angeles Lakers too. It would have been man, a perfect fit. I, I, I'm not gonna lie. I thought we had it in the bag. I'm keeping a bug with you, but hey. That's how it is when you're a Lakers fan. You're interested, yeah. and Lakers are interested in everybody. Lakers are interested in everybody. They are. I'm um, interested in the Lamborghini, but <laughs> that don't mean I'm getting a Lamborghini. So, I don't know. It is what it is. But, yeah, I, I like to fit with the Mavs. I'm curious to see how it works out this year. Mm -hmm.